A significant technological advancement has been achieved in the field of photocatalytic water splitting for hydrogen production. The research results were accomplished by the Institute of Metal Research, Chinese Academy of Sciences. If this technology can be commercialized in the future, it will mean that hydrogen can be produced simply by exposing water to sunlight, turning the dream of converting water into fuel into a reality. After reading the related research paper, let's have a brief discussion about this exciting development. Remember, it's a must-have topic for dinner conversations. Please give it a thumbs up before watching. So, what exactly is going on? In 1972, scientists discovered a phenomenon. Titanium dioxide could serve as a catalyst to enable sunlight to directly decompose water into hydrogen and oxygen. Just imagine, sunlight is free, and by simply exposing water to it, hydrogen can be produced. Moreover, hydrogen is a clean energy source. Doesn't this seem like a perfect solution to the energy crisis? However, the reality is far from that simple. Otherwise, there would be no need to strive for carbon neutrality today, and hydrogen-powered vehicles would be everywhere on the streets. The problem lies in the fact that the efficiency of photocatalytic water splitting using titanium dioxide as a catalyst is extremely low. Usually, it is less than 0.1%. With such low efficiency, how can it be practical? You might end up spending half a year exposing water to sunlight and only obtain 50 grams of hydrogen, which is just enough to charge your mobile phone once. Nevertheless, the human spirit of exploration is indomitable. We can improve this technology and enhance its efficiency. Although the efficiency is still low even today, we need to understand why the catalytic efficiency of titanium dioxide is so poor. First of all, we need to understand its working principle. As a semiconductor, when titanium dioxide is illuminated by sunlight, the electrons inside it will be excited, mainly responding to the ultraviolet band. This is the photoelectric effect. Photons knock electrons out of their orbits, creating a hole and an electron pair. The hole is the position left by the original electron. After the electron leaves, the hole carries a positive charge and can also move. Both the hole and the electron here are called photogenerated carriers. Among them, the electron will reduce the hydrogen ions in the water molecule to form hydrogen gas, and the hole will oxidize the oxygen ions in the water molecule to form oxygen gas. This process is the photocatalytic water splitting process. The problem with titanium dioxide is that the holes and electrons excited after being illuminated are very likely to recombine directly within the body cavity. And for the few holes and electrons that manage to reach the crystal surface, their directions are random, and there is also a high probability of recombination. You've been illuminating for a long time and finally managed to generate carriers, but they recombine within one millionth of a second. With this situation, it's simply unfeasible, which is why the efficiency is so extremely low. Without optimization, the efficiency can't even reach 0.1%. Normally, the conversion efficiency of sunlight should be at least above 5% to have the opportunity for commercial trials and above 10% to be worthy of large-scale promotion. Therefore, photocatalytic water splitting using titanium dioxide has not been a mainstream hydrogen production technology until today. This time, the research conducted by the Chinese Academy of Sciences has set a new record for photocatalytic water splitting of titanium dioxide. Specifically, its AQY apparent quantum yield has reached 30.3%, and the STH solar 2 hydrogen conversion efficiency has reached 0.3%. What do these specific figures mean? AQY is the ratio of the number of generated hydrogen atoms to the number of absorbed photons, which is equivalent to the utilization efficiency of the absorbed photons. And STH is the energy conversion efficiency of the entire system, that is, how much hydrogen is produced based on the amount of light irradiated. The previously mentioned 0.1% refers to the STH index. Obviously, this times 0.3% is significantly higher than 0.1%. In fact, reaching 0.1% is already considered a high level, and reaching 0.3% is an extremely high level. The reason why such an efficiency improvement has been achieved this time is that the researchers doped scandium into titanium dioxide. Scandium is a rare earth element. Do you remember in our previous video that we mentioned rare earth elements? 
It seems that as long as a rare earth element is doped, there is seemingly no problem that cannot be solved. Here, scandium was chosen because it is a neighbor of titanium and their ionic sizes are relatively close, allowing for partial substitution without affecting the crystal lattice. The doping of scandium has helped titanium dioxide solve to problems. On the one hand, the photogenerated carriers are less likely to recombine within the bulk phase. This is because the doping of scandium has eliminated the inherent lattice defects of titanium dioxide, specifically the trivalent titanium ions and oxygen vacancies. You just need to have a general understanding of this. There's no need to go into too much detail, otherwise, we'll have to explain a lot more. Anyway, these defects are the traps that cause the carriers to recombine within the bulk phase. Therefore, by eliminating these traps, the recombination within the bulk phase is avoided. On the other hand, the doping of scandium has enabled the researchers to achieve selective exposure of crystal planes. Each plane can have a different crystal plane configuration, and different crystal planes will guide different carriers. One guides the holes, and the other guides the electrons. In this way, when they reach the crystal surface, they are already separated. This is similar to the formation of a built-in electric field in a photovoltaic cell, providing dedicated conduction paths for the holes and electrons respectively. Thus, there is no need to worrying about recombination caused by random movement. So, through this doping method and a series of precise regulations and controls, the efficiency of photocatalytic water splitting of titanium dioxide has been significantly improved. Its essence lies in enabling the photogenerated carriers to escape from the crystal smoothly after being generated, and then react with the hydrogen and oxygen in the water molecules respectively. At this point, many people may ask, since the STH conversion efficiency is only 0.3%, which is less than 1%, what is the commercial prospect of this technology? Actually, I need to tell you that in the field of photocatalytic water splitting, titanium dioxide is not the only approach. In fact, there are many other catalyst systems. In laboratories, the AQY and STH indicators of these systems far exceed the results achieved by the Chinese Academy of Sciences this time. Of course, those studies haven't been commercialized either. The significance of the Chinese Academy of Sciences achievement this time lies in the fact that it is a full photocatalytic water splitting experiment based on the titanium dioxide system. In this specific sub field, it has currently set the highest record. Many previous experimental reports either involved elaborate catalyst designs with a large number of rare metals and complex synthesis processes, which were very costly. In the end, they rarely exceeded 1% in efficiency. Or they used sacrificial agents, such as methanol, to consume holes, allowing electrons to escape freely without encountering holes. However, if scandium is doped into titanium dioxide for photocatalytic water splitting, not only is there no need for sacrificial agents, but also no complex catalyst design is required. This is highly economical because titanium dioxide is actually very inexpensive. Titanium itself is the ninth most abundant element. Moreover, China's titanium dioxide production capacity accounts for 50% of the global total. Therefore, this approach has the potential for large-scale deployment. As for scandium, the doping element, as a rare earth element, there is naturally no shortage for China. So, the technology of researching photocatalysis based on the titanium dioxide route has great development prospects in China. The question now is how to improve the conversion efficiency. Currently, it is 0.3%. Is it possible to increase it to 10% or even 20%? Well, of course, it is possible. To improve the efficiency, mainly two indicators can be enhanced. The first is the AQY apparent quantum yield mentioned earlier. Currently, it has exceeded 30%, which is already very high in the titanium dioxide field. However, in the entire field of photocatalytic water splitting, it is not the highest. Some catalyst designs can achieve several tens of percent. If we continue to conduct in-depth research on titanium dioxide, there is still room for improvement in this indicator. Essentially, it refers to the utilization efficiency of photons in the ultraviolet band. Through further doping and regulation, there is hope for further increasing the AQY. Currently, only 5% doping has been used, and the research on its mechanism is still ongoing. 
If the AQY can reach over 90%, it will also contribute significantly to the STH. The second is the utilization rate of sunlight. Why is the STH of the titanium dioxide system generally less than 1%, usually only a few tenths of a percent? This is because it only responds to the ultraviolet band, which accounts for only about 5% of the solar spectrum. This means that only a small part of sunlight is actually utilized. If visible light can be further absorbed, the STH will obviously increase directly. How can we further improve the performance based on titanium dioxide? We can continue to dope elements to adjust the band gap, enabling the material to respond to visible light. We can also directly stack it with narrow, band gap semiconductors to cooperate and broaden the absorption spectrum. These solutions all have a certain probability of success. In 2009, scientists discovered the principle of photocatalytic water splitting for hydrogen production using graphitic carbon nitride. Since then, it has become a major research hotspot. This material mainly responds to visible light. Therefore, it can be made into a composite material with titanium dioxide to improve the STH level. Theoretically, with fine optimization, there is great hope of exceeding 10%. Think about it, the efficiency of photovoltaic cells was only 6% initially, but now it is over 20%, and the efficiency of stacked designs can reach over 40%. However, currently, considering only titanium dioxide, the efficiency is completely insufficient for commercialization. Whether it can be commercialized depends on its competition with existing mainstream hydrogen production technologies. In the current hydrogen production industry, there are three types, grey hydrogen, blue hydrogen, and green hydrogen. Grey hydrogen is the most common hydrogen production method at present. It mainly extracts hydrogen through the reforming reaction of fossil fuels, such as natural gas. Blue hydrogen refers to collecting the carbon dioxide generated by the former to avoid direct emissions. Green hydrogen is a completely environmentally friendly hydrogen production technology, such as using renewable energy sources like wind and solar power to electrolyze water to produce hydrogen. Currently, photocatalytic water splitting for hydrogen production has not yet entered the commercialization stage. Therefore, it is still difficult to evaluate its actual value. However, in the long run, photocatalytic water splitting has great potential in terms of cost advantages. Using fossil fuels such as natural gas to produce hydrogen does not meet the current development needs because it consumes non-renewable energy. Although the cost is the cheapest at present, it will gradually be phased out in the long term. Electrolytic water hydrogen production, whether based on thermal power or wind and solar power, is bound to consume a large amount of energy during the production process, and electricity has a price. In contrast, photocatalytic water splitting, compared with electrolytic water splitting, does not need to first convert light energy into electrical energy and then into chemical energy. It achieves the conversion in one step. Therefore, theoretically, it is more straightforward than electrolytic water splitting in green hydrogen production and more environmentally friendly than electrolytic water splitting in grey hydrogen production. Also, precisely because it directly utilizes sunlight, theoretically, its direct energy consumption cost is the lowest, almost zero. However, considering that the catalyst technology is not yet mature in actual commercial deployment, the indirect energy consumption cost generated during the preparation of the catalyst may not be very low. This involves issues such as the efficiency, lifespan, and cost of the catalyst. Although the photocatalytic water splitting result based on titanium dioxide this time cannot directly lead to commercialization, it at least shows that there is still great potential for technological improvement in the photocatalytic water splitting route. This is still a technology path worthy of exploration and investment. Therefore, in the long run, with the emergence of more significant breakthroughs, photocatalytic water splitting for hydrogen production may be able to match the cost of electrolytic water splitting in the near future. Thank you for watching.